It's a myth that sugar causes diabetes. Many people think that the consumption of high carbohydrate foods or foods high in sugar are the cause of diabetes. It's easy to think that high blood sugar is caused by sugar, but that's only one part of the equation. Our body needs sugar to function. It's the fuel that powers our movement. The problem is when the sugar can't get into the cell and therefore stays in the bloodstream. The way that sugar gets into the cell is through insulin. Insulin is the key that unlocks the door to the cell so that the sugar can get inside. Imagine you are going to the front door of your house with your house keys. However, you find that you can't unlock the door. There's nothing wrong with your keys, but you find that there's something jammed inside the lock. There's chewing gum in the lock. When a person has diabetes, the person's insulin isn't working. The glucose can't get into the cell. But why is this? It's because the person's cell is clogged with fat, in the same way that the lock is jammed with chewing gum. My name is Dr. Michael Greger, uh, founder of the nonprofit website nutritionfacts.org. Every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. What's our number one cause of death? Number two cause of death? Go down the list. These are largely diet-related diseases. It's the foundation of these theories tend to be that you know carbs are bad because they increase insulin product, and insulin um, having high levels of insulin associated with cancer associated with lots of bad things. But meat is insulinogenic. There's there's a paper by uh, you know Holden colleagues, 1997, uh, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition called. In fact, you can look it up. It's probably free by now. Insulin index of foods. It went through about 50 different foods, and eating beef causes a greater spike in insulin than white potatoes and white pasta and uh, you know and white rice more insulin and that if that's the villain right then you'd stay away from the meat what causes insulin resistance it's intramyocellular lipid it's fat that's inside the muscle fibers that interferes with insulin signaling such that um, uh, your body has to keep pumping insulin to try to force it um, into your uh, muscles, which use up about 85% of, the, of the, your blood sugars. Your blood sugars rise because they can't enter into the cells. And, and not just any fat, but particularly saturated fat is toxic. So it actually is called lipotoxicity. I and mean, that's, that's the term that's used in the literature to describe the effect that saturated fats have on the insulin, uh, on producing insulin resistance. Back in 1927, they took these medical students, put them on a high-fat diet, and within days, their insulin sensitivity dropped. Their, uh, they had twice the blood sugar spike to the same meal. Your fat cells actually fill up with fat. They swell. You don't get more fat cells. They just get bigger. And when they stretch to a certain point, they start f spilling fat over into your bloodstream and that gets lodged in your muscles, and that can spill over, get lodged in your liver, and cause insulin resistance in your liver, make things worse, and then can actually lodge in the pancreas, in the insulin-producing cells of your pancreas, and then you can actually get that same lipotoxic, that fat toxicity, um, in your pancreas that reduces, uh, eventually, um, reduces the amount of insulin you can produce, and then you're in you know, florid uh, type 2 diabetes, and, which is the number one cause of uh, blindness, number one cause of, uh, of non-traumatic amputations, number one cause of kidney failure in this country. These are horrific complications. And what does modern medicine have to give them? Just trying to reduce the complication rate. I mean, just not treating the underlying cause, um, and we can cure this disease even years into the process, which, yeah, which is really exciting. It's not like, you know, the, I mean, we used to think, you know, we just kind of kill off these, these, uh, these, these, these betas of these insulin-producing pancreatic cells, but it's actually maybe we're just kind of suppressing them, we're just, and we can actually kind of wake them back up um, if we actually eat um, a, a cleaner diet, reduce that fat. Diabetes is a disease of fat toxicity in our organs, in our muscles, in our liver, in our pancreas. Type 2 diabetes is the leading cause of heart disease and stroke in this country, and being diagnosed can feel like a life sentence. But a Houston cardiologist says you can reverse type 2 diabetes and heart disease if you're willing to make some dramatic changes. HealthWatch reporter Beth Galvin has the story. Get rid of insulin, control blood sugar, minimize medication in just a few days? Sound too good to be true? Rosalie Isles did it. She was hospitalized, overweight, suffering from hypertension and high blood pressure when she met Dr. Baxter Montgomery, and he immediately put her on a special diet. But three days after I went on this diet, 
I was taken off the insulin. I had been on insulin since 1987. I no longer take insulin. By getting on a plant-based diet and getting it completely off animal flesh, uh, it allowed us to get off the insulin and she, it allows her to lose weight. Rosalie says she lost 35 pounds in two months and reversed her heart disease. This is Rosalie before the diet. Now at the age of 81, she's confident enough to model in fashion shows. I feel like a different person. Ever since I started coming to Dr. Montgomery, my life has been different. I'm completely changed. The dreaded skill. Victor Fuller had just undergone his second life-saving open heart surgery when he turned to Dr. Montgomery. The diet helped him get get his heart disease under better control. He no longer has type 2 diabetes, and he lost 50 pounds. At first, it was a little shaky there. I didn't want to do it because I'm a meat and potatoes man. But then uh, after I, he told me the ins and outs of what it could do for my body, how it could cleanse my body, then I gave it a try. Uh, the weight loss is very nice and it's cosmetic, but the real magic has happened under the hood with him. Someone with the amount of vascular disease that he has should not function at nearly the capacity that he functions at. And uh, it's because of the lifestyle change that he's made is what has gotten him to that point. Well, I was taking 13 medications. I'm down to four. I've uh, just been into uh, Mount Barker uh, to see the doctors and um, to get the results on my blood test. I think I've only been on this uh, lifestyle now for around two months, um, but there's been a there's been a huge change. The main two uh, for me was the diabetes type two, and uh, that has been reversed now. Um, you know that is it's just unbelievable. So Robbie, you're a type one diabetic, is that correct? I am. And you're a promoter of the, uh, the fruit lifestyle, 80 10 10 vegan, high carb, low fat. Absolutely. And as a type one diabetic. You had type 1 diabetes before you got in the lifestyle? Or? That's right. It actually sort of helped me uh, find the lifestyle. For sure. So uh, what would be your tips for diabetics? Uh, the most important thing is for... If you're, if you're a type 1 diabetic, if you're type 2, you're on medication, you really have to be disciplined about your fat intake and really be aware of your fat intake. So using something like chronometer uh, to figure out exactly what percent of calories are coming from fat. And if you're a uh, type 1 diabetic, it's the number one mistake. If you're a type 1 diabetic and you start eating a lot of fruit, and if you don't take insulin at least 15 minutes before you start consuming the fruit, you're going to get a high blood sugar and be like, what the heck's going on and blame the fruit. It's not that. It's that the fruit raises the blood sugar so much quicker than your other, uh, your past diet. So you really have to make sure you have a window before you take the insulin, you know, and then when you eat. That's so, like the most important thing. I get so many people saying, oh, I, I'm doing this fruit thing, and, I, and I, my blood sugar was like 400, and I, that's, that's the reason. My fat content is really consistent, yeah. which makes it so it's easy to figure out how much insulin to take and so don't have to worry about so it. So you're like just sugar, sugar, sugar? Pretty much. Nice, nice. And uh, I guess if there's a type 1 diabetic with like a lot of weight issues, it's probably going to help him drop a lot of weight. Sure. It? Well, type, yeah. Type 2s are the people who usually have the weight issues. Yeah, that's type, right. you'll, you'll see a lot of thin type 1s. So type 2 diabetes, you can reverse that, yeah? Oh, for sure. Check Top out the movie Forks Over Knives. Definitely. Up until now, people with diabetes have said, well, too much sugar in my blood, don't eat sugar. Well, we reasoned that in countries like China, Japan, Thailand, Cambodia, where it's a very high carbohydrate diet, but a very low fat diet, given that they have the lowest diabetes rates in the world, we thought it's not carbohydrate. The problem has to do with fat. Those fats get into the cells that causes that insulin resistance, so the diet should be getting the fat out of the cells so insulin can work again. Type 2 diabetes used to be called adult onset. The problem is that the insulin, which is this hormone that acts like a key to let the sugar out of the blood into the muscle cells, where, where it can power your, your movements, that insulin key isn't working very well. Starting in 2003, the U.S. government funded my team to test a totally vegan diet. I'm talking about no animal products at all, but it wasn't a low-carb diet at all. People could eat rice and pasta all they wanted, and it worked dramatically well, better than a more conventional diabetes diet. People lost weight, their blood sugars came down, their cholesterols fell, and oddly enough, they found it easier to follow this kind of diet because we didn't make them count calories. They could eat as much as they wanted. 
Type 1 diabetes used to be called childhood onset. The cells that make insulin are dead. And so if a person already has type 1 diabetes, if you put them on a, a healthy vegan diet, that will reduce the likelihood of complications. There are researchers who now believe that one of the big triggers for type 1 diabetes is dairy products. It turns out that proteins in cow's milk, the body recognizes them as foreign proteins. The body makes antibodies to destroy them. Those same antibodies then destroy the insulin producing cells in the pancreas. And there's a major study right now that's nailing down whether if kids are breastfed and they are not given a cow's milk protein at all during infancy, that we might be able to reduce the risk of type 1 diabetes. The evidence so far says that's exactly right. Diabetes is genetic, right? It runs in families. And there, in fact, are genes for diabetes. But the genes for diabetes are committees. They're making suggestions. And you could say, well, wait a minute. I don't really think I want to have diabetes. And in fact, most disease genes, whether it's for heart disease or diabetes or hypertension, certain forms of cancer, even Alzheimer's disease, they're not dictators, they're committees. And they are, their activity depends on what we put into our bodies. As you've seen in the videos, sugar does not cause diabetes. In fact, a high carbohydrate diet, low in fat and low in protein can reverse type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes can be better managed through a whole foods plant-based diet. Feel free to share this video with anyone you know who has diabetes or who you think could be helped by watching. Also feel free to check out the resources that I've included in the description box below and check out those channels that I've recommended. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you.